and genetics has debunked that theory. So a lot of Indians and a lot of other people were insulted by that. It's like, we're that dumb that we don't know how to move when it stops raining to go somewhere else to find food? Or we're that dumb when we don't know how to store and dry food in case there's some hard times or whatever? So that, that's been debunked. There's no genes, no thrifty genes that cause that. And so what they have found is that our diet changed us, not the opposite of having starvation change us. So here's a, where they started. The whole kids outside St. Louis here. And they used to do hunting and fishing, but they also planted some things called uh, sunweed and uh, amaranth. And when they ate that, they were all pretty healthy. They were normal height. They didn't have any dental problems. They didn't have any kind of uh, bony malformations that showed that they were malnourished. But once corn made it from Mexico all the way up to the Illinois and Wisconsin River, those people became so dependent on just that one crop and their, their populations got big so fast that once something did hit like a drought, they were so dependent on just that corn that they, they started to have those starvation problems. They started to show uh, problems with their teeth and problems with their bones and the skeletons that they've dug up were shorter and more hunched over. You know, of course, then when you have a lack of food, people start fighting. And you have to show that these kinds of foods, these really hard to digest foods, they come with really complex sugars, more complex than starch like in potatoes. And they, they you digest them slowly over time and we do that better than anybody else in the, in the, on the planet. So this is uh, sunflower. It's uh, called uh, sun chokes, and they taste really good, and they grow around here. And when they first brought them to, uh, like in, in Mandan, when Lewis and Clark first went up there, they gave them a bunch of that to eat, and they, they said all those white people got so sick, they just were, like, they couldn't poop, and they were having really bad stomach cramps, and they were farting a lot, and they, were, they thought they were going to die. But all the Indians are like, why are you having, we eat this all the time, why are you having such a problem? <laughs> There's uh, pine nuts in the southwest, collecting those, those pine nuts. Those are difficult to digest, but those people ate them as one of their staple food items. And uh, these cactus grow around, but they really grow big in, in the southwest of Mexico. And those fruits are really good and tasty, and they're very... The seeds in those foods are very high in vitamin D3 and omega-3 fatty acids. So we got all these, these wonderful things that we don't eat anymore. Which part is the fruit? <coughs> and these older types of corn, not sweet corn, but these older types of corn, especially the ones that are blue or red, have the same chemical that's in cranberry juice that protects your kidneys and protects your bladder and the starch or the sugar that it, that's in them is better for you than the sugar and starch that's in sweet corn. This is for babies. You remember Arthur, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Milk is for babies. <laughs> <laughs> that's because the, there's very few populations on Earth because of starvation had to rely on the milk of other animals. So here in Europe, there's a big starvation. C100 to maybe AD 600 or something like that. They had to they had to rely on the milk of animals just to survive. And there's a few hot spots here and a few hot spots here, but most of the world is low low milk uh, drinking. And because they're milk drinking or because they're not milk drinking, they have lactose intolerance. And America is a not here, but I bet you it would be mostly white. <coughs> Now, a lot of us can drink milk because we're mixed with white or, or whatever. But there was a study that actually causes them to be a diabetic. It kills your pancreas. And so what did you guys all get in, in Kamaz? Dry. Dry milk. And what do they feed the babies? Dry milk. Similac all has dry milk products. And they think that there's something going on there wow. in people who don't drink milk normally, getting milk at a very young age that causes, uh, that can possibly cause diabetes. That's why breast milk is best. So this is just a genetic plot. 
So here, right here, this is the lactase region. It shows you that the, the Europeans change so that they can process milk. But that change doesn't exist in Asians and it doesn't exist in Africans. Africans, Asians, and we're not on there, or what? No, we're not on there. No, we're never on there. <laughs> 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 Eating that much milk. So these kids in Manitoba, northern Manitoba, 7 to 15, fed the school diet, right? So they give you the RDA, the recommended daily allowance based on white people. So they're giving them milk with vitamin D3 in it and the wow. calcium in it. And it was too much. They started having kidney disease. They were getting kidney stones made out of calcium, so they were having renal leaks, they were bleeding. The intestine that tries to take in everything it can. So when you give it simple food, it's going to take in more than it should. And so those kids were given a, a daily allowance of calcium that was okay for white people, but not okay for them. Um, another difference is that in addition to this, this running phenotype, being able to process oxygen better and run for their distances. If you have to do those things, you have to be able to mobilize fat from your liver and from your muscles and from your fat stores. So that's why I think we have the elevated uh, cholesterol is to mobilize that fat so that you can turn it into energy. But also, you have to have some way to go that distance without drinking a lot of water. And you have all these stories of all these tribes that outran the horses and outran the army just kept running and running and never had to stop and the army couldn't catch up to them because they didn't have to stop for water. <coughs> and you know in Sundance we go the long way but they, they, in Mexico in 1984 there was an earthquake and nobody thought any of those people were going to be alive because they were under the rubble for eight days. When they, when they, got, they dug them out they were still alive. No water for eight days. So most white people are usually three to four days without water and they're dead. So this is also something they don't believe about us, that we have these changes in us, probably because we were runners, that make us be able to go without water for a long time. And if you give us simple food, we're going to get fat. <coughs> but those same changes that allow us to go without water for a long time, make high fructose corn syrup that's in everything now, pop, yep, yep. cereal, uh, even in like hot dogs and stuff, the high fructose corn syrup reacts with those changes in our kidneys to cause us kidney disease. And then that makes diabetes happen quicker when you have kidney disease. Genetics is adapted to something else, just like this polar bear is adapted to something else. So this, this goes into what I call the social determinants of health. It's not just your genes, right? It has to do with your living environment. So stress is a social determinant. Racism is a social determinant. Uh, if your environment's really polluted because of 